Are you ready for a pattern review? And a sew along. It is for our new look 6742 and this coat right here, part of the coat series. So if that's some content you would like to see, keep on watching. Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to the channel. My name is Rochelle from Rochelle Handmade Design. And in this video, I am gonna give you a quick pattern review and then we're gonna go off to the sew along for this coat right here, coat number three in the coat series. This is the last coat in the coat series. Although I wanted to sew four coats uh, this month, I was only able to get three done, okay? So that other coat, I'll put it into next year sometime to sew when it gets coat next year, all right? So before we get started, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe button, and also turn on the notification bell so you are notified every time I upload a new video. If you are new to the channel, oh welcome. Hello, ciao, guten tag, aloha, hola, konnichiwa, waguan, bonjour. If you are returning, you know what to do. Go get your quick sex quick snack come back and get something to drink as well while you're there and then come on back so we can go ahead and get right on into this pattern review and then off to the sew along so without further ado let's go ahead and get right on into this video all right so you guys I'm not gonna take very a long time or very much time with this pattern review I'm gonna keep it short sweet and to the point so y'all can get right on into the sew along all right so let's talk about the pattern description. Now I'm going to give my own because you guys know your girl is busy and I did not have time to look on the Simplicity website before doing this pattern review. All right. So this is more like a wrap code. It is more like a kimono to me if you really think about it. Now you have two views, view A and view B. It's for new look 6742. You have two views, view A and view B. View A is your shorter length, view B is the longer length. And then you have trim along the neckline and trim along the tie belt, which is optional if you choose, all right? So just a quick pattern description, a, a wrap coat in various lengths as well as with or without trim. You also have one snap that you will be putting on, which I'll tell you about that in the sew along. So that is the pattern description for this pattern. It also has pockets, by the way, which is optional. All right, so that is the pattern description for this pattern. Let's go ahead and talk about skill level. So for the skill level, it's rated as easy. Do I feel that this pattern is easy? Yes. If you know how to do bias tape, it's just as easy as doing it with or without bias tape. Now in the sew along, I tell you how to do it with and without bias tape for your facing as well as your tie belt. So you will hear that in the sew along as well. All right, let's talk about fabric use. So the fabric use for this uh, pattern, now I used it for my stash. I wish I would have picked a thicker fabric, honestly, because it was kind of windy outside when I took these photos. Um, and it was overcast at the same time, but I wanted to get the photos done because I've been sitting on this coat for a few days now, all right? And then another thing is the fabric is a cozy flannel from Joann's. And like I said, I wish I would have used a thicker fabric for this, but I do still like the color and I still do like the coat, all right? Let's talk about Notion shoes. So the Notion shoes for this pattern is just one snap. Now, I do not know the size of my snap because I've been having it in my stash for a very long time, but you need a sew on snap, not a um, snap that you need to put on with a tool or pliers or anything. It needs to be a sew on snap, all right? And it's because you do not wanna see that on the right side of your fabric. You're going to be attaching it on the other side of your fabric, all right? So that's that. Let's go ahead and talk about pattern pieces. Now for this pattern, it's nine pattern pieces. However, it is so easy to sew. Now, to be honest with you guys, if I was not filming the sew along, it would have probably took me about three hours from cutting the fabric, cutting the pattern and getting it all sewn together. But it does take a little bit more time because I have to stop going, I have to stop the video to keep going back and forth to the sewing machine as well. All right, so because of that, I do want to say that it is easy to sew about three hours, three and a half to four hours max for this uh, jacket coat, all right? Let's go ahead and talk about pattern sizing. Now, I'm not gonna talk about pattern pieces because you'll hear it in the sew along, but let's talk about pattern sizing. So for this pattern, it comes in a one envelope, extra small to extra large. 
The size that I cut was a medium. However, I could have cut a small and it would have fit perfectly. But because I wanted it to wrap around my hips and not make any adjustments at all, I cut the medium, all right? So that's the size that I cut for this pattern. Any modifications, I did not make any modifications to this pattern whatsoever. I felt like it just needed to be sewn the way that it was designed to be sewn, all right? So that's that. Let's talk about, did it look like the photos or the drawing on the pattern envelope? Absolutely. Um, now, one thing I will say is I made my own trim. I did use scrap fabric from my stash. Um, if you're looking at the trim that I use, I use the leftover fabric from when I did a sew along for Battle of the Shirt Dress, which I will go ahead and put in the description box below. It is a sew along for a shirt dress, McCall 8031, I believe. And then the sleeves is McCall 7838. Um, I did during the Battle of the Shirt Dress. I'll put it on the end screen as well as in the description box below for that sew along. So that's the fabric that was used um, the rest of the fabric was used as the trim. Now I do not have any more of that, all right? That is the way that you can definitely use scrap fabric as well as bias tape, all right? Move it along. Let's go ahead and talk about, are the instructions easy to follow? Yes, they are. I think the instructions are like 12 or 13 and you are super, super done, okay? It, it was super easy and you'll see that in the sew along here shortly, all right? Let's talk about likes and dislikes. I do not have any dislikes whatsoever. It's all love. I love this pattern. Um, let's talk about first time experiences. Now this, I don't have any first time experiences for this pattern as well. I have done wrap coats, I have done wrap dresses. So I don't have any first time experience as well. Um, would I sew it again? Absolutely, I think I would sew this again. However, I do wanna you know, sew other patterns as well. So, um, I'm, this may be a one and done for me because I have so many patterns that I want to sew, but yes, I would sew this again. Yes, I would recommend this to others as well. And for my pattern rating, I'm going to give this uh, pattern a five out of five. Now, if you, I'm judging it based off of fabric, I would give it a four out of five because it was just my decision to use a flannel instead of a wool or something thicker. However, the pattern is a great pattern, so I'm stamping this pattern a five out of five, all right? So that's it for the pattern review. I hope you enjoyed it. Let's go ahead and get over to the sew along. Rich woman. If I ever took it, I'd have made it pay. So the dogs are we gon' get it, that's a fact. They counting on me, I can't let my people down. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the sew along for the next coat in the coat series. It is New Look 6742, which came out in the fall of 2022. Now, I will be following along the view B. There's no difference. The only difference is the length. So it's a length variation. One is shorter than the other, but if you decide to use view A, you can do that and still follow along with the tutorial that I am providing. Now, it does say that this is an easy, pattern or easy to sew so I'm gonna be walking you through the steps in this tutorial so without further ado let's go ahead and get on into the pattern instructions first all right so let's go ahead and look at the pattern instructions for new look 6742 make note of the cutting layout right here I'll go over the pattern pieces you need you're gonna need all nine pattern pieces. I'll explain all of those here shortly um, because I'm doing view B, um, what I need to cut out is on this side right here, which I'll show you in just a second. But if you are doing the binding, which is optional, now I am up in the air on if I'm gonna do the binding or not, simply because I need to make sure that I have enough binding or bias tape that I'm gonna be creating my own in order to do the binding. Now, one thing I will say is I will not be using pattern piece number eight to do my uh, bias binding because I'll be creating my own and one thing that I did notice is that piece does not fit on the um, fabric that I will be using so I'm just gonna hope that it's enough if not guess what I'll I just will not do the uh, bias binding but it's completely up to you I may actually leave it off on mine you'll know once I get to that step all right Another thing you need to do is make sure you interface pattern piece number four and pattern piece number five as well. And then the only thing that you have to do is follow the instructions for making your binding if you are using 
pattern piece number eight. Uh, follow those instructions as well. Like I said, I'll be making mine. I do have a tutorial on how to make your own bias binding, which is uh, video number 15, where I made the mask with the bias binding strings, okay? So you could go back to that video. I'll also put it in the description box below if you are interested in that, all right? So just to give you a little idea what we're gonna do, we're gonna uh, place the pockets first. After doing the pockets, we're gonna go ahead and attach the jacket at the shoulder seams. Go ahead and get the facing piece and do the facing piece. Finish off with the sleeves, then put on your carriers. After we put on our carriers, we're gonna hem it, finish with the bias binding, and then we're gonna make our ties and add our closure. That's it, that's super simple on what we're gonna do for this. Now, I'm not gonna need these instructions right here. I'm just gonna be following along to this um, instructions on this one piece. And you have about 17 steps, so it should go together relatively easy and quick, all right? So now that I talked about the instructions, let's go ahead and move over to the pattern pieces. So the pattern pieces you will need is pattern piece number nine, which is your belt. You need to cut four. Pattern piece number four, your front facing, you need to cut two of fabric and interface two. I will interface mine once I start sewing, okay? Right before I start sewing, I like to interface mine. Next pattern piece is pattern piece number one. This is the front, you need to cut two. You need to make sure that the wrong side of the pattern is facing up on your pattern and then cut, or, I mean on your fabric and then cut all the way around. Next pattern piece is pattern piece number three, your pocket, you need to cut four. Pattern piece number seven, your carrier, you need to cut one. Pattern piece number five, your back facing, you need to cut one on fold of fabric. Pattern piece number six, your sleeve, you need to cut two. And then pattern piece number two, which is your back, you need to cut one on the photo of the fabric with the wrong side of the pattern piece facing up, all right? So that's all the pattern pieces that you need in order to construct this jacket. Let's go ahead and move over to the supplies that you, the tools and supplies you will need in order to construct this jacket. All right, so when it comes to the tools and supplies that you need in order to construct this jacket, you need your basic sewing kit. So your basic sewing kit would be pencils, uh, seam wrappers, marking tools like disappearing marking uh, tool, your pens as well, scissors, one for paper, one for fabric, never mix the two there, rotary cutters if you use rotary cutters in order to cut your fabric. Those are all the basic supplies that you will need in order to construct this jacket. One more thing that you will need um, when it comes to notions, right? You will need at least one sew on snap. So make sure it's a, snow, a sew on one. I'm gonna bring it closer so you could kind of see that. And this is by Dritz, and it says two sew on snap, you're only gonna need one. Now, according to the uh, pattern, it does say that you will need, it doesn't really say what's the, um, how big you need your magnetic closure or snap. Um, so I don't know how big this one is. I want to say it's probably about one inch, but I just picked it up from Joanne's and you could do the same thing as well. All right. So that is what you need for the tools and supplies that in order to construct this jacket, let's go ahead and get right on into the sewing. All right. So let's go ahead and get straight on into the sewing. So grab pattern piece one, two, and three, which are are your front, your back, and your pocket, all right? So I'm gonna move pattern piece number two out of the way and working on pattern piece number one, make sure you label your right and your wrong side. If you have not been following me, then you know I label what side is my front, back, what have you, okay? So it's no different. I'm gonna do that to both my front and back pattern pieces as well. So no one gets confused on where we are, all right? Now that I have it labeled with right sides together, I'm gonna pin my pocket to the side of both my front and my back pattern piece. So I'm just gonna open out the front. I'm gonna show you on the front, you could do the back yourself. I'm just gonna move one front out of the way, all right? So this is what it's looking like and that curve that you have over here is your side seam. The other side is your center front. So make sure you have the right one. 
And what you're going to do is with right sides together, you're going to pin your pocket to the front. Now I'm just grabbing two for the front and then the other two will be used for my back. All right, so make sure that you have the correct side and I'm going to turn it and I'm going to pin both front pattern pieces. All right, so go ahead and pin at that notch. You should have a notch in your pocket and a notch on your side, pin, and make sure you uh, transfer all your notches and your dots on all your pattern pieces. So go ahead and pin your pocket to your side of your front now. Now that I have my pocket pinned to the front of my front, using 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning and at the end, and sew using a regular length stitch. Um, after you do that, go ahead and finish off. Now I'm gonna finish off about an inch above my pocket and an inch below my pocket with my serger, okay? Now I'm just gonna serge all of my seams on this one because I'm gonna wear it kind of like a casual jacket instead of using bias tape for all my seams. So that's what I'm gonna do for mine, but do whatever method of finishing you want to do. So when I say finish off your seams, do whatever method that you're going to do. So go ahead and sew your pockets on and finish off your seams now. All right, so now that I have the front and the back pockets uh, attached on, I finished them off and I pressed the seam allowance towards the front. Now, one thing that I will mention is for the front pattern pieces, you need to understitch. So what I did was after I sewn on the pockets, I finished the front off and then I made sure to press it towards the front and top stitch, okay? That's what you're seeing right here, that top stitch. So after you press it, press the seam allowance towards the pocket, you need to understitch. Understitch is done at about a fourth of an inch seam allowance. So make sure you do that just on your front pattern piece. So understitch only on your front pockets. Do not understitch on your back pockets, all right? So now, now I am not sewing my side seams together yet. You guys know I like doing the flat method um, for my sleeves. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm skipping to step number four where we're going to attach front to back at the shoulders. So just make sure you have the right pattern pieces, okay? And we're going to attach front to back at shoulders. Now I have one and I have right sides together and we're going to attach at the shoulders, okay? So what that looks like is we're going to attach right over here, all right? So you have a notch right here and this is your shoulder seam right here, okay? Now, I wanna say that you may think that this front piece right here is your shoulder seams. No, 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 no. This is your shoulder seam where you have that curve right here, okay? So I'm gonna turn it this way so you can see it, and we're gonna pin at that notch first, and then pin all the way up our shoulder seams, okay? So go ahead and pin your shoulder seams in place now. All right, so now that I have the shoulders pin with right sides together, using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and a regular length stitch, back stitch at the beginning and sew across both, and back stitch at the end and sew across both shoulder seams. Go ahead and do that now. Once you do that, finish off your seams and press them towards the back, which is pattern piece number two. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I went ahead and did the shoulder seams right here, the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and do the flat method for our sleeves. So I already did one. I'm gonna show you how to do this one. So just open it out. Just make sure that your front is on. I have the front on my right side over here and then my back and pocket is over here, okay? So what I'm going to do is take my sleeve. Now, one thing I will say about my sleeves is 
I went ahead and searched the raw edge, the bottom of my sleeve. Then I created a one and one fourth inch seam allowance. Instead of me turning in a fourth of an inch, I just went ahead and searched it because this is just gonna be worn as a casual jacket um, or wrap coat instead of just, you know, like your normal one that you're gonna wear for like a business, okay? So that's why I went ahead and searched it. I went ahead and created a basting stitch at one and one fourth on my sewing machine. I pressed it up and then top stitched on the right side to make sure that I get as close to that serge edge as possible, all right? Now with right sides together, what I'm going to do is match up the notches. You wanna make sure that you match up your notches. So I have two double notches right here. I'm gonna make sure I match that up. I'm gonna make sure that this end match up with that little corner right there. And of course, if you need to, if your uh, fabric do not kind of give, you need to create some rows of gather. I will not need to do that because mine's give. So I'm not gonna create rows of gather like it says in your instructions, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is match up that single notch with the single notch in the front portion of my wrap coat and pin. Then what I'm gonna do is make sure my seam allowance is towards the back. Now, like I said, the left part of me is towards the back, so I'm gonna make sure that that is towards the back. And I'm gonna pin there. And then what I'm gonna do is pin all the way across my shoulder seams. But I wanna make sure that this front edge right here is at that corner as well. All right, so I'm gonna pin there. And then I'm gonna pin all the way across the rest of my sleeve. So go ahead and do that now. Now that I have my sleeve pinned to my arm area using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, backstitch at the beginning and at the end and then finish off your seam allowance. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have my sleeve sewn into my arm area, um, our arm's eye area, the next thing you wanna do is sew your side seam. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead with right sides together. So I'm gonna make sure that my back is on the table and with right sides together I'm going to pin my side seam. So I'm just going to turn it so you can see it. All right so now that I have it turned and you can see it I'm going to make sure I match up my arm seam and pin there. I have a notch at my sleeves, I'm going to pin there, and then I'm gonna pin the rest of the length of my sleeves. Not only will I do that, I'm going to go ahead and match up my pockets as well. So I'm gonna pin there at that dot. You should have a dot right there at your pockets. Leave your pocket area open. You should have another dot there, so pin there and then pin all the way to the bottom of your jacket. So go ahead and finish pinning your jacket now. Now that I have my side seam and my sleeve pin using 5 8 of an inch, a 5 8 of a inch seam allowance, I'm going to start at my hem. I'm gonna back stitch at the beginning. So all the way to this dot, and then pivot. Now, normally you would break your thread and then start here. Now, I am not going to do that because what I'm going to do is when I get to this dot right here, I'm going to pivot, sew around my pocket, get to this dot, pivot again, still using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance along the pocket, and then pivot, still using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, back stitch here at this dot, so all the way up and through the sleeve and then back stitch at the end. Once I do that, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clip the top portion, both, I'm, I'm going to do the back. So you only want to clip the back layer of your pocket area at the top and at the bottom. This helps the pocket lay towards the front, all right? So you're going to do that. After you do that, you're going to finish off your seams for your underarm seam of your sleeve, as well as the pocket portion of your, uh, the bottom portion of your coat or jacket, and then finish off the pocket area. All right. So go ahead and do that now. All right. So now that I have my 
side seam pocket and my sleeve done. I'm gonna go ahead and move my coat to the side. I'm just gonna put it on my dress form for now and start working on my facing. All right, so go ahead and grab your facing piece, pattern piece number four and five. And what you're going to do is with right sides together, you're going to pin at the shoulder seams, basically. So what I'm gonna do is open pattern piece number five, right? And then I'm going to put my pattern piece number four on my pattern piece number five, right sides together, and I'm going to match up the, the notches, okay? So make sure you match up the notch there, and then pin all the way across on both sides. So go ahead and pin your front to your back facing at the shoulder seams now. All right, so now that I have my front to my back at the shoulder seams of the facing using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning and at the end and sew across both shoulder seams and then press your seams open. After you do that, what you want to do is this edge, this outer edge right here, you wanna finish it off for the front as well as the bottom edge of your back piece as well, all right? So you wanna finish those off. Now I'm just gonna finish mine off with my serger. After I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and insert my label. Go ahead and do your label now because you do not want to try to do want to try and do it once you attach this facing onto your uh, coat, all right? So go ahead and do all of that now. All right, so now that I have my facing sewn together at the shoulder seams, I went ahead and finished off the outer edge of both my front and the bottom edge of my back. Uh, facing piece, I went ahead and added my label like I told you I was going to. Now, I'm going to move this to the side for just one second because I want to explain something, all right? Now, I'm going to get the instructions, and you guys know I go out of order to make it make sense, okay? So right now, we are on step number five and six. So we did number five where we applied the interfacing right sides together. We sewn at the shoulder seams. We finished it off. We did all of that already. So on number six, it says with wrong sides together, you're going to pin your facing to your jacket or coat, matching your shoulder seams, having raw edges even. Then you're going to base the raw edges together. All right. Now, Step number six explains if you are doing the bias. So if you are doing the bias around your coat, you will sew it together, wrong sides together, instead of right sides together, all right? What that means is basically, you're going to attach it, it's going to look like this. I'm gonna explain both ways, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to turn it like this, and you're going to take your facing and you're going to attach it wrong sides together, all right? Normally we attach it right sides together, but in this case, if you are doing the bias, you the bias uh, binding around your coat like I will be doing, you will attach it wrong sides together and just pin all the way around, all right? Now, if you are not doing the bias, you do not want the bias, right? You will instead of doing it wrong sides together, you will do right sides together as you would normally do. Right sides together, and then you're going to pen right sides together. Make sure your, your uh, seam allowance is towards the back on your coat, and then you're just going to pen all the way around the front, the collar, and the sides. Either way you're doing it. So go ahead and pin either wrong sides together or right sides together now. All right, so now that I went ahead and pinned, after I pinned, I went ahead and basted it all the way around the front. Now remind you, I am doing bias uh, tape, so therefore I did a wrong sides together instead of right sides together. Now. If you did right sides together um, and then sewn around, then what you need to do is press your seam allowance towards your facing and then under stitch all the way around your front and through your neck area, all right? And that's to keep your um, facing from flopping up and down. But after you do that, you need to 
stitch in the ditch. So basically you're just going to line up your back and front that shoulder seam line with the shoulder seam on your jacket or coat and then stitch in the ditch on both sides of your shoulder all right that if you're doing the if you are not doing the bias tape that's what you need to do now all right and then come back and follow along with me now if you are doing the bias tape portion this is what you yours should look like you should have the front and then your right sides together you have your inside of your jacket all right now what we're going to do is move our jacket off to the side we're going to start constructing our carriers and our tie belt tie belt so go ahead and move your jacket or coat to the side now all right so now that we moved our coat over to the side the next thing you're going to do is work on your carrier so what you want to do is with right sides together you want to go to your pressing table and press it in half open it back out and then you're going to press to that line on both sides right so it's going to be look it's going to look like this press on both sides after you press on both sides you're going to fold it in one more time give it a press and then top stitch on that pressed edge, okay? So go ahead and do that carrier now, but I'm going to do my carrier the same time I am doing my tie belt. So I'm just gonna move this off to the side quickly. And then I'm gonna grab my tie belt. Now you should have cut four of these and you're going to do it on both pattern pieces, okay, all four. So what you're going to do is go ahead and take two of your tie belt ends, so it doesn't matter which ones that you take, just make sure that they are right sides together. So I'm just gonna move these two off your, to the side. You're going to do the exact same thing. So for both of the tie belts. So what you're gonna do is you have two notches. You have a notch right here. You're gonna pin at the notch. And then pin at the top and the bottom. All right, I'm gonna do the exact same thing to the other tie belt. So I'm gonna grab my other tie belt as well, and I'm going to pin at that notch, pin at the top, and pin at the bottom. Now that I have both of my tie belts pinned using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning and at the end, and then press your seam allowance open, all right? So go ahead and do your tie, do that portion of your tie belt and your carriers now. All right, so now that I have my carrier sewn together, I'm gonna tell you what to do with that here shortly. And then I have my tie ends where I sewn them, two of them together, right sides together, and then I press the seams open. So I'm gonna show you what to do next with the tie, and then we're gonna talk about the carrier again. So with your tie belt, what you wanna do is with right sides together, you want to have them right sides together and then pin. So I'm gonna match up up the seams right here and pin and then you're going to pin all the way across the length of your tie ends all right so go ahead and pin there now I'm not gonna pin it because I feel like you could do that portion by yourself and then what you're going to do now let me tell you this I am not gonna put bias tape on mine because I don't think I'm gonna have enough. So I'm just gonna hold my tie belt because if you are not putting bias tape on your tie belt, what you're going to do is sew it with right sides together, just like you did for your facing. If you are doing yours with bias tape, then you need to sew your belt together, wrong sides together, and baste all the way around your tie belt, all right? If you are sewing it with right sides together because you are not doing the bias tape, you need to leave a good two to three inch opening to be able to turn it right side out like you would normally do with any tie belt, all right? So now that I gave that spill, I'll be doing mine last because I wanna make sure I have enough bias tape before sewing it wrong sides together, all right? Now moving on to the carrier, there's only a few steps that's left to do. So you're gonna do your carrier, then you're gonna make your bias tape or purchase bias tape, whichever one you want, and then do your hem and put on your snap and then you're done. Now one thing I wanna mention about this carrier is you need to cut three pieces. 
and you're gonna cut at three and three fourths. So go ahead and cut your pieces for your carriers now, and then I'll show you how to put them on the coat. So go ahead and measure out three and three fourths and cut to, so you will have three carrier pieces. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I went ahead and did my carriers, I moved my tie belt off to the side. I have my three carriers and I cut them. Now I am looking at the back of my coat. It's facing up towards me. And one thing I wanna show you, I'm hoping you can see this on camera. I have three dots. I have a dot there. I have a dot on the other side and then I have one in the middle that's white, all right? One thing that I'm gonna say is from my pocket, I measured up one inch in order to place my carriers there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one of the carriers a little bit over, about three eighths of an inch over that area, all right? And I'm going to pin, all right? And then what's gonna happen is I'm gonna uh, stitch across it and then I'm gonna fold in a fourth of an inch at the top one and then top stitch right here. So I'm going to go ahead and pin the rest of them the exact same way, making sure that if you have this press edge on the left, make sure it's uni you know in unison all the way across, all right? So I'm gonna make sure that I pin this one there And then I'm gonna put, pin the last one on as well to this side. And then I'm gonna go to the sewing machine and using about 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance, I'm gonna go ahead and stitch across each of my carriers. Once I stitch across, like I said, I'm gonna fold in about a fourth of an inch and then go ahead and stitch across again, all right? To make my carriers, all right? So go ahead and do that. Once you do that, you want to go ahead and do your hem because I'm gonna go ahead and do my hem as well. So what I'm gonna, what I already did was I went ahead and searched the bottom of my hem and then I'm just going to create a basting stitch all the way across and press up three, I'm sorry, press up one and one fourth inch and then stitch on the right side all the way across to get my, to do my hem in place, all right? So go ahead and do your carriers in your hem and then we'll go ahead and finish off. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have my carriers done, I'm gonna turn my jacket over. I'm gonna show you what they look like. So my carriers are done. Make sure you clip your loose threads. So I'm gonna just go ahead and cl clip that loose thread. So all three of my carriers are done in the back. This is where you're gonna put your um, tie belt through. So I'm just cleaning up some of the threads there. And then the next thing that I did was after the carriers, I'm gonna turn it to the other side. And I went ahead and pressed up my hem at one and one fourth. This is what it's looking like. So the only, there's only two things left to do. You should be done with your jacket now, but there's only two things that you need to do. The first thing is you should have a dot right here on your, um, coat. Now, my uh, sew on snaps are a little too big. So it's okay because that's all I have and I don't have time to go to Miss Joanne's, okay? They already take a lot of my money to begin with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, instead of putting it right at that dot, I'm going to go over just a little bit, okay? And make sure that it's centered and I'm going to hand sew. Now, one thing I wanna tell you about hand sewing is when you hand sew, you wanna make sure that it's not on the right side. So I'm just gonna kinda of like go in and up and loop it all the way through. That's what I'm gonna to do to make sure that there's no marks on this side of my fabric, okay? So make sure that you put the socket part on this side, all right? And then you put the other portion, this portion right here, so I'm gonna bring it up so you can see it. So this portion on the left side, so this is my left side, you put this portion on this side, and then on the right side, you wanna put this portion. It, this is what it looks like, okay? You put it on this side. 
all right? And you hand sew that on. So what happens is every time you close your coat, it's going to attach just like that. It's gonna look exactly like that, okay? On the inside, all right? And then you just basically, when you wanna open up your coat, same thing, all right? So you need to do your one snap on your coat. Go ahead and finish off your tie belt. After you finish your tie belt, the only thing left for you to do is if you are doing your bias tape, you need to do your bias tape all the way around your jacket. That's the front as well as the neck edge. If you wanna do um, bias binding around your tie belt to make it look really, really nice, you can do that as well. But that's it for this uh, sew along. I hope you enjoyed. If you make this coat, do not forget to tag me at rochelle.handmade.design on Instagram. Or you could comment below here on YouTube and drop a link to your channel. All right? Well, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Until next time, keep sewing. All right, so there you have it. That is the complete pattern review and the sew along. I hope you enjoyed. If you make this coat, do not forget to tag me on Instagram at rochelle.handmade.design. So that's it for the pattern review and the sew along. I hope you enjoy. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on the notification bell so you are notified every time I upload a new video. So I'll catch you in the next video. And as always, Happy New Year and keep sewing.